Hi, my name is Davi and I work at Didali Studio. Today I'd like to share with you a bit of the process of character making, some tips on rigging and animation, and a small setup using the stack to achieve any specific effects for one of the jobs we did last year. You see how the stack on 3ds Max can be very powerful and flexible to help you make all sort of things. Let's then dive into it. So here we are at 3ds Max and our first approach was to get a cylinder, extrude some polygons, to get the corn shapes, turbo smooth and FFD on top to shape it to resemble the corn hub we were trying to model. We made a, a shape of a mouth here and with probooleans we were able to cut it on the character. And this, is, this is was quite okay to showcase to get the overall shape and to get the, the feeling of the character as a whole. But if you look closely, this is not ideal for skinning purposes because we end up with a lot of triangles and n-gons and a lot of geometry here to deal and not ideal. Also the shape of the corns themselves were not what we were actually aiming for. So we needed another approach. We started again, this time with a plane. We gave it quite a bit of segments here, put a bin modifier. It has the same height of the corn hub of the character, of its face, and uh, almost the same circumference, almost the same diameter here. So with the bas basic shape of the plane set, we duplicated it put an edit poly modifier to delete all the polygons except these this two here, copied it and model it to take the shape of the corn we are aiming at, looking for. Duplicated it a lot here, 12 times across and 11 times on the height. Put a bend modifier to make it wrap around, bend modifier is 360 here and adjusting the direction as, as fit. And an FFD to get to the shape again, to resemble more the shape of the corn hub we have here. It, it is getting there, but we have a problem here. If you are looking for something more procedural that we can edit down the line, if anything, any problem arises, this is not ideal per se. Of course, we can add on the polygon level uh, some stuff of the, the corns themselves and they will cascade across to all of them because they are instances but if you need to to make some other kind of corrections some fast corrections like put an X form here and scale the corn grain to make it longer or maybe make it wider you see that we start to losing the shape pretty fast here. So in this case we made another approach that is much better frankly. We used MCG here. We made a cloner, very simple MCG. Let me show you pretty fast. It's kind of cringy for me to show it to you guys because if you follow any Facebook group of M on MCG you probably know Von Guin and other guys there, uh, Chris Diggins, Martin Coven, Paul Neal, they are all uh, very intelligent people that make awesome MCGs which are bound to inspire you. And I'm just showing this to you to make the point that MCG is quite easy. This whole thing took around 15 minutes to get my head wrapped around it. And it's, it works quite simply by taking an object and cloning it as many times as I want and the distance it gives is the actual actual bounding box of the original object. So I made 11 copies and made them along the Z axis here. I copied the cloner. This is quite another example of how powerful the stack is while being flexible and procedural. This time I made it offset on the x-axis and made 12, 12 copies and if you look here, compare it to the original plane, you see 
it is exactly the same size overall, same height, same length. And since I have one object that's based on, well, the same root object, I can now bend it and put an FFD2 on top. And if I need for any reason to change the corn, the individual corn's uh, scale, I can put an X form here, change the corn width, and compensate it by diminishing the number of the copies I put on in total. So I end up with the same overall shape, just a little bit of scale and adjustment on the FFD and I'm there but I have a pretty wider corn grain. This is quite cool and if I don't need it anymore, I can just turn it off or delete it. And here I can just go back and put 12 copies again. And I can also put more to play around with it. Like This is like a parachute now. And if I need, I can make this corn itself taller or shorter depending on what it's needed for the animation itself. So quite cool to to use MCG whenever you can. It's a tool that's totally worth learning. In the terms of rigging, this is still quite a dense mesh with a lot of polygons, a lot of triangles, lots and lots of vertices all around it. Here on specific regions, it's not really spaced out, not really uniform. So this is also a perfect case where using another modifier will help a lot to get things done here in Max. Moving on with the modeling kind of done, or at least on the right direction, we still have to figure out a way to skin this high poly character on a skeleton and with vertices crumped up together quite close to each other and others spaced out like we have here. The obvious route of choice is using skin wrap where you will end up using a low poly mesh to drive your high poly mesh. This is kind of obvious, but still is an overlooked modifier that sometimes I see people not using it. But if you have a high poly mesh that you need to deform in a smooth way, don't forget that you have a modifier there that's called skin wrap and can help you achieve smooth deformations of your high poly meshes. Okay, this is one of the close to final animation files that we have that I'd like to show you something about it that, uh, that is quite cool. It is when the character is scared, running from the sun and its corns start to popping up turning into popcorn. As you can see, there are holes forming on the character's head. And the way we approached this problem was quite interesting. Again, using the stack modifier. And actually quite simple because it allows us to iterate on it uh, very fast. Let me disable some modifiers here to show you the process. A little bit of step by step. So we start by just by select the region where the popcorn is supposed to appear. This first region is synced with this keyframes here. And we start by selecting a bunch of vertices, relaxing them. This relax modifier is actually animated. As you can see, it goes to 25. Then we make, just by relaxing it, you can see that it pushes inside and we actually push it a little bit further with a push modifier, which is animated to a little bit of relax again and push yet again. We then put a poly select just to clear the selection we have here and make a new one, this time on the another place where the popcorn is supposed to come out and repeat the procedure. Now a little bit down the timeline Relax again, that is, that is animated. Push modifier, relax, push again. And with Turbo Smooth, you can see it works quite okay. What is quite nice about, about this approach too is that 
if you want the corns to pop not from here but from here or another place we just have to update our selection and it will just works because it is entirely based on the selection we have here if I did not select those I could sele have selected these ones grow a little bit and it would have worked the same way you see and this is yet another example of the power and flexibility that this tech modifier workflow allows you to have down below i'm gonna leave links to the 3ds max procedural tools facebook group where you can find not only mcgs but also osls and dcms which are other procedural frameworks inside 3ds Max. And I'm gonna also leave a link to the Stack Facebook group, where you can get in touch with other 3ds Max users and enthusiasts. So, hope to see you around those places and have a great day!